content in person. I just don't care about the content dump. And I know a lot of people in this room don't care about it either. So my essential question was, how do students feel inside the online learning environment that they typically experience? And once we identify that, how can we use that information to build better learning environments online for students? This is how kids feel in online learning environments. They feel isolated, they feel marooned, and come on, we all know that student in an online learning environment. That like shack floating out there all by himself. They don't respond on the discussion boards, they're not participative. This is how we experience online learning, right? We don't have that transactional distance that more and carefully defined because the spaces we choose include audio, they include media, they include pictures, they include conversations. That's often absent from these traditional LMSs that we are constrained in. So what I'm suggesting is move away from that content dump. I don't want it to be take a quiz, get a score, move on. Watch a video, take a quiz, get a score, move on. Read an article, take a quiz, move on. We all know, we've all been there, you're better than that, and I know that. The bottom line is, the spaces we've created online and traditional LMSs aren't places that we really expect students to stay very long. Look at this, right? No pictures, no uh, images, no audio, no video. Some are a little better than this. I admit I picked some bad ones on purpose. But the bottom line is, I don't want to be there. It's not where I spend my Saturday morning. We are creating intellectual prisons for these students to reside in. And you know what? The best part is, when the course is over, we kick them out and we say, don't come back. So if I'm a student, why would I create something worthwhile? Because I can't even get back to it. We can change this. Invite students or experts or other people into your class. We know good online learning happens with collaborations anytime, anywhere, anybody. You don't have to be registered to take my course. Collaborate. Join the conversation. Maybe you're not a formal member of my class, but you probably have something to contribute. And that flies in the face of a lot of what we consider at either higher ed or high school and joining these courses. We've got to move forward. There are so many collaboration tools that we can use to do that. And you know, online learning must be social. I want to see people swapping images, swapping audio, swapping things that make them feel like they really know each other. We've all had that moment this weekend where we go, oh my gosh, you're so-and-so, and then there's hugging and you know all of that ensues. We want our kids to have that. So what's an online teacher to do, right? This seems like a huge task. Alas, my years of research have resulted in three key ideas that will help you. First, require collaboration beyond the discussion boards. Threaded discussions are dead, right? They're hard to follow, they're filled with text, they are difficult for kids to navigate. Give them Twitter. Give them anything besides that threaded discussion board. Use multimedia when providing feedback and giving assignments. We know that nonverbal communication is about 85% of how we communicate. You're taking that away in an online environment if you don't use multimedia. Here's an example of a video blog that I set up for my MED course last semester. Every assignment that I gave them and every piece of feedback I provided, I used video. They were really sick of seeing me and really sick of hearing me by the end of the course. But they said, we felt like we really knew you. Some of them called me and said, we knew you. Final thing, aid metacognition. Students who understand how they learn and can plan out their learning do better in online courses. So the more that you can facilitate that at the beginning of a session, the beginning of a course, the beginning of a learning experience, the better successes your kids will have. So, to summarize, one, collaboration beyond the discussion board. Two, feedback and instructions with nonverbal cues, whether it's audio or video. And three, metacognition. Help the kids plan where they need to be at the end. So, this is the end of our conversation and the end of our time together, but the beginning of the discussion. Join me on my blog, kristenswanson.org. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks.